this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at an example that deals with down downstream sales, eliminating unrealized profit. Many students were asking me about this topic repeatedly. So finally, I came in and I'm going to work a few examples about this topic. This topic is covered in an advanced accounting course and it's also very importantly covered on the CPA exam. Now, I do have lectures about downstream sales on my website under the advanced accounting course. But in this session, I will work an example and I will I'll have to say a simple example just to start start to build the your knowledge about this topic so let's start with the example here P company P is parent company owns 80% of the outstanding stock of S company which is the subsidiary during 2014 S company reported net income of 525 and declared dividend it uh, declared no dividend at the end of the year S company inventory included 487 and unrealized profit on purchases from P company Okay, enter company sales for 2014, total 2.7. Prepare the journal entry from all consolidated financial statement work paper entries necessary at the end of the year to eliminate the effect of the 2014 intercompany sales. Okay, all right. So basically what we are saying is this. We have P company, we have the parent company, and we have the subsidiary. And what happened, the subsidiary sold to the parent company, the subsidiary sold to the parent company, they sold them 2.7 million worth of merchandise, worth of product, of which, uh, and and they told us S company still have 487 of profit. That's as a result of a sales to S company. So S is selling to P. So the best way to illustrate to, in my opinion, the best way to do see, is to see, to illustrate this, is to see the journal entry both on the sub and on the parent company. So when the sub made the sale, the sub will say, well, I'm going to debit account receivable parent company, 2.7 million, and I'm going to credit sales parent company, 2.7 million. Okay. The parent company would say, okay, I made a purchase. So I'm going to debit purchases of 2.7 million and I'm going to credit my accounts payable dash sub 2.7 million. Okay, so far so good. So this is basically the, the basic journal entries for both companies. Now I'm going to make an assumption here and I'm going to tell you why I'm making this assumption. I'm going to make this assumption to be able to explain to you the journal entries to tell you how we end up with the journal entries. Now here it says the profit, the unrealized profit is 486500 So I'm going to make the following assumption. I'm going to assume that P did not sell anything from the purchases. So P bought those $2.7 last day of the year, and they were not able to sell anything to the outsider. Okay, so no sale has happened. What does that mean? It means S company, they have another entry to make, because S company has a profit of 487000 It means they're cost of goods sold was 2212500 and they reduced their inventory by 2212500 you might be asking hold on a second how did you just came up with this figure did you just kind of came up you know bring it out of you know out of the hat no not at all what i assumed is this i assume since they have a profit of 487,500 it means their sale was 2.7 million i assume their cost of goods sold was 2,112,500 so this will give them a profit of 487,500 which is an intercompany profit which is which is needed to be eliminated when we prepare the consolidated entry so this is where the 487 came from so this is what happened right before right before we are starting to consolidate to prepare the uh, work paper entries now let's see what we need to do now well first thing is we have to eliminate the sales so the sales let's start and let me use a different color sales will be eliminated against the purchases so we debit sales um, for the parent company 2.7 million we credit purchases 2.7 million okay and what happened is this intercompany sales and intercompany purchase has been eliminated now obviously also we close AP to AR AP against the AR that's not a problem now what remain is this we have now we still have two issues to deal with what are those two issues one is this 487,500 remember this is an intercompany profit this is inter 
profit. So this profit that that the subsidiary recorded will have to be eliminated. It's unrealized profit. It's unrealized profit. Be why? Because P company did not sell any of the any of any any of it. Okay, so it's so we have to eliminate this. So let's think about this. How can we eliminate a profit on the sub? Well, one thing to do. How can it, how can I eliminate this? Well, if I increase their cost, I can eliminate it. If I increase their cost of goods sold by 487, simply if I add 487, not, not, not delete. If I add 487, 500 to the cost of goods sold to the cost of goods sold, my profit will go down to zero. So let's do that. So I'm going to debit cost of goods sold 487 500 so this is i told you this is one problem that i still have there's a second problem what's the second problem let me put the second problem here on the parent company side i have a second problem what's the second problem remember the parent company did not sell those merchandise so what does that mean it means those merchandise are i'm gonna inflated in what sense they are inflated well the cost to the whole company, to the parent and to the sub, the cost to both is two twelve five hundred. But when the parent company bought it, they bought it at two point seven. Therefore, they have an inflated inventory by how much? It's infl inflated inventory by the inflated inventory by the profit. Well, then we have to reduce the the inventory. We have to reduce our inventory on the parent company by four eighty seven five hundred. Again, why did I do this? because the parent company purchased from the sub so let's assume the sub that let's make it easy the sub sold them something for ten dollars so the sub will debit account receivable 10 credit sales 10 but let's assume for the sub cost of goods sold is eight for the sub okay so what happened is this this cost of goods sold in inventory when transferred to the parent company it became ten dollars why because the parent company will debit purchases for 10 credit ap for 10 therefore the eight dollars the cost of goods sold for both of them should be eight dollars what happened when the when the parent company bought it and they still have it it's inflated therefore they have to reduce this they have to reduce their inventory by two dollars which is by they have to reduce the inventory by the profit therefore the second entry is to debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory so hopefully this simple example, again, we're going to be adding more complication to this as we start to add up more, but you want to make sure you understand this before you move on, before you move on, before you move on, okay? Because we're going to, we're going to be dealing with opening account and uh, ending account, and sometime we're going to assume that we did not send all the inventory, so how do we have to deal with those adjusting entries? But for now, if you have any questions, email me. Also, you could uh, visit my website, forhatlectures.com, for additional lectures. If you happen to visit the website, by all means, please consider donating. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it.